Hi everyone. Today I'm going to continue to expand a little bit on what we did yesterday, which was exporting data to Excel from Access. So we yesterday we learned how we could export, whether it be a table, a query, or an SQL statement. We can export that data from Access into Excel with a single call of a single line of VBA. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar, you can consult the video from yesterday. I'll include a link. And that goes obviously along with my article on the subject and a, um, a function that we use for that. So we're going to use this again today. I've tweaked it just slightly. and I'm going to show you how and why. But it, this is basically what we're using at the core to get the data into Excel like we did yesterday. So if you haven't seen the video or you haven't looked over this code, don't understand it, you may want to do that first before moving forward. But what we're going to be really doing today is now taking that data, because now we've got it in Excel, and creating charts in Excel with the data. So it's, it's really always the same idea. We're using Excel automation. And with Excel automation, we have the capability of automating anything that can be done manually in Excel. So why do we do this? Well, yes, your clients, your users, you know, you've output the data. They can go and create their own charts. The problem with that is if it's a one-time deal, it's, you know, it's one thing. But a lot of this stuff, at least in my experience, is not a one-time deal. These are things that they're going to do on a routine, whether it be daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, whatever the question may be. And not everyone A is proficient in Excel. So what to you and I may take, you know, 30 seconds to achieve or a minute, whatever. Some of them will struggle with it for half an hour, an hour, if not more. The other thing too is, you know, on Monday they may do it one way and on Tuesday they do it another and Wednesday even yet another way. So you end up with reports that aren't standardized and then become confusing. By using Excel automation, we're able to clean up things, standardize things, and just make a more professional product. And it speeds things up too. So let's just look at the basic concept here. I have a, an article on it. Once again, the link will be provided below. But I go over basically how I came upon developing it. And I started off with, as you can see, three lines of code. And it slowly evolved and evolved until we got down to here which is what we're going to be exploring today, the going for a run code. So we have a long list of enums, and then we have the routine, the procedure that we're actually going to call to create our, our charts. And it actually isn't that complex. We're just creating a chart. We have our data sources, chart title if we want, the axis and titles if we want. You know, this is all logical stuff here. And that's what you're going to start noticing with this automation uh, thing, whether it be Excel, Word, PowerPoint, anything you're automating, Outlook. Um, once you start understanding a little bit about how this works and you start understanding methods and properties, you're going to start seeing that it really isn't that complex or scary. I know when you first get into this, it seems very intimidating, but it truly isn't. You're going to start seeing the more you do it, the easier it gets to do. So, you know, as usual, the best way to learn is just to dive in. So let's do that. Let's look at how we can do this. Once again, I've created a basic demo. It's just a simple access file. What I've done is we needed some data to export. So I just put in here a, a table, monthly rainfall, and it's broken down, as you can see, by a date, by a city, and then a quantity of rainfall. Obviously, this data can be anything. This is just one example. And then, you know, we're going to start using some best practices here. So you're going to see I created three modules. The first one is I created my self-healing variable. If you don't know about self-healing variables, I'll provide a link below. You should truly, truly start using this on a regular basis in your databases. And uh, I'll provide a link to my video on the subject. It just avoids some overhead and reduces by a little bit coding. I'll show you where I use it. So we have our, our self-healing database variable. And then I created a module for all my Excel stuff. And once again, as you're going to see here, let's just scroll down for one second. 
I have my self-healing Excel variable. At the very bottom, I know I'm skipping over stuff. Just wait a second. We'll go back to it. I have that export record set function that we saw in the previous video. And then I put in the enums. So he, and then we have the function here for creating charts. Now, one thing I wanted to go over is previously our export routine would export things and then clean up after itself. So typically at the end, we were clearing out the Excel object. The thing here is we don't want to clear out the Excel object anymore because we're going to continue to work with it, right? So we are going to export our data, but then we want to keep working with that data now to create charts. So that's why you're going to see now we're no longer clearing our, our object variables that we created, whether it be the worksheet, the workbook, or the Excel application objects. So right off the bat, we're removing those three from being cleared or cleaned up at the end. And part of that, to be able to work with them and not have to pass them back and forth, uh, you'll see that I've commented them out here in the function level and instead, I've now put them up here in the uh, in the upper section of my module to make them public variables. So now, once they're declared, once they're initialized, I now have access to them to use them elsewhere. Um, and you'll also, one other slight notice, obviously, is originally we were creating our Excel application variable in our export routine we're no longer doing that because we're using the self-healing variable. So this is all taking care of us for us now. So as you can see, we're, with self-healing, we're able to get rid of all of this. We're able to get rid of this. We're able to get rid of this. And we're getting rid of the cleanup at the end. So by using self-healing, you do simplify your code. I'm leaving it there just so you can see how I modified the function initially. But all of the stuff that's commented here can all be now deleted and just aerate your uh, and simplify your code. So having said that, just to review briefly what we did yesterday, so we can move forward from that point. It was very simple. We built up our SQL statement. So I'm pulling my date and rainfall quantity from my table. And in this case, I'm going to just pull the Montreal data and I order it nicely by dates and it gets uh, listed and then charted in the proper order. And with that, I create my record set. And then with the record set, I would check that I actually had data. So we do have data for Montreal. And if we didn't, then we're just going to exit. There's no point continuing. And if we do have it, then we just move on here. Then I'm just calling my function that I'm passing the record set to. So in this case, because we're not supplying a file or anything, it's creating a new Excel file with that record set. So let's comment this out for one second. We're going to get to it. But it, this is what we did yesterday. And if we run it, you get an Excel document with the data in it. Now notice here, just you, you know, want to have nice, clean data when you're displaying it to users and, you know, management. I didn't like the fact, you know, you have a, a, a decimal here, no decimal here. Uh, it just, it doesn't look very professional. So I wanted to show, yesterday I had mentioned it, the power of Excel automation. And now by simply adding one line, I'm going to tell it on that worksheet that we just created, column BB, which is the one with the rainfall quantity, so the decimal number, make my format number have two decimals. So now if we run it, I have nice clean numbers. So this is just what I'm talking about Excel automation. This is the power of Excel automation. We can do whatever we want. Instead of having to come here and do it manually, we just do it with one line of code. And we can change the format for whatever we want. Obviously, I selected two decimal numbers. We're dealing with numbers. But you can change your, you know, you could make this short date if you want it, right? And if you're, you like the short date format or if you like long date format or whatever the case may be, you know, we're able to control everything now. 
And as you can see, we're talking about controlling it with a single line of code. It's not hard. Okay, so we're back at where we were yesterday. We're able to get our data into Excel very easily. Let's look at what do we have to do now to get our chart. Well, let's just quickly look at the function. Okay, so if we scroll back up to our Excel create chart, it's, it's very simple. It's got a series of input arguments. So Excel worksheet object. So which worksheet are you wanting to insert the chart on? The range. So which data range do you want to use to generate the chart? And then here the top and bottom coordinates for the chart. So you get to choose where do you want that chart to be located on the worksheet that you specified. Uh, then data label position and your legend position. So where do you want legends and data labels or you omit it, you don't want them at all. And then you will get your chart title, your x-axis title and your y-axis title. They call them labels. So it's, it's, that's it. We just supply some basic information and this function goes and creates it and positions it and labels things for you. So we just need to call this one function. That's all we need to modify in this routine here. We just need to add a single line. So let's go down. I've already done it. And as you can see here, I add a single line. What have I done? Okay, I'm passing the worksheet because if you remember in our export, we come here and we end up defining a uh, workbook and we define a worksheet where the data was uh, inserted. Uh, same thing in late binding and early binding, it makes no difference. We define a workbook and a worksheet. And if you remember at the top, we made these public variables. So now we're able to reference them in any other module we want. And that's what we're doing here. So I'm simply telling it, well, I've already exported. So this has been initialized. I already have the worksheet that the data is on. So I'm just passing it the worksheet. So this is the worksheet on which I want my chart inserted. Here it's, uh, where's the data? So for that, I'm using my worksheet and my range. I'm telling it because we just did a, uh, an insert here and we let it take the first cell. So A1 in as many rows and columns as it needed for the data that we passed. Well, I know that I'm starting on A1. I know my data is two columns wide. And here I added that I go get the number of rows returned, the number of records returned. So that I'm able to tell it the data is this size. This is where my data resides on the worksheet. And then here I'm telling it, well, where do I want my chart to be located? I want it to be located between D2 and L21. You can change this. this. You choose where your chart goes on the worksheet. I'm just pick something arbitrarily. Then here you come and you have the list. If you come here and you do this, you have the entire list here. IntelliSense is there. And you pick what type of chart you want. So I'm taking a bar clustered. And here you can control your legends and your labels. And then you have your title, your x-axis, your y-axis labels. And then just for illustrative purposes, I went and I then created, you see how easy it is? I made another call and I created a second chart. And then I made another call and I created a third chart. So in three lines, I'm able to create three different charts very easily. And then if we just run it, we end up now with our data and we have our first chart, our second chart, our third chart and you are in total control of everything. But that's it. That's a single line of code allows us to insert a chart at the location of our choosing with the data we want. And just for illustrative purposes, if we take this guy again, 
Let's comment these guys out for a second. If we were to change this and not use the record count and just say I'm taking, well, in this case, four records because the first row is actually a header, and we rerun it, let's close the existing file and rerun it, you'll see that it's only taking to B5. So that's why, that's why in my examples, I'm calculating how many records I actually sent. So that's what this is. And that's it guys. Short, sweet, simple, effective, and you're in control. Once again, I hope this has taught you something and I hope the uh, code and the sample uh, proved to be useful. Thank you once again for watching. If you don't mind giving me a, a like, uh, subscribe to the channel. If you're able to promote it, please promote my channel. It'd be greatly appreciated. And we'll see you uh, in the next video. Have a great day, guys.